Howdy ho there folks. Today we're going to be working on a little, some of these last problems that we had over momentum. Uh, I'm sure you guys didn't get all of it done. Some of you did, but we're going to work on the last couple problems. I'm going to do 22, 23, 24, and 25. Um, actuality, there's a whole bunch of them there in the middle. All they want you to do is write P equals MV, plug in, solve. We're going to do some of the same stuff here, except um, they make it kind of confusing because they've got this table right here and basically I'm going to tell you is to forget about this left side of the table every single time and just fill in the right side. Some of you may have heard that. That was a phone call from the president I had to take, but I'm back now. I took care of that national security advisory question. Um, don't worry, we're all safe now. Um, it's covered. But let's take a look at this problem. So the steel ball whose mass is 2 kilograms is rolling at a rate of 2.8 meters per second. What is the momentum? Well, our equation for momentum is P equals MV. So again, just scribble out the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, we're going to write in the equation. Now, you're doing this all on a separate piece of paper, unless you've printed it off. So you can do it however you want. Um, so if you printed this off, then I would just say scribble out the left-hand side and write the equation and plug in what we know. It tells us that the steel ball has a mass of 2 kilograms and its velocity is 2.8 meters per second. That means the momentum then is going to be 2 times 2.8 is 5.6 and then this was kilograms, this was meters per second, so it's 5.6 kilogram meters per second. That's all there is to 22. 23, uh, marble is rolling with the velocity, so there's my velocity. In a momentum, that's my P, what is the mass? <coughs> So P equals M times V. So in this case, they give me the momentum was 0.1. The mass is what they want us to find. The velocity is 1.5. So we divide both sides by 1.5, and we turn out to be that the mass is 0 0.067. And this right here was kilogram meters per second we divided it by meters per second so those cancel out leave us with just kilograms so it's 0 0.067 kilograms all right um april 15 1912 now sometimes they give us problems like that with a bunch of numbers just so that it seems a little bit confusing um it was the Titanic, ran into an iceberg. What was the cruise liner's speed? So they're asking us for the velocity. They want us to find the velocity. When it collided with an iceberg that had a mass, so this is its mass, and its momentum is right there. So my equation is P equals M times V. <clears throat> um, the momentum in this case is 4.9 times 10 to the ninth equals 4.23 times 10 to the eighth V. Well, divide both sides by 4.23 times 10 to the eighth. And what's our velocity turn out to be? Well, our velocity in this case turns out to be 11.58 meters per second. And that's how we go about finding that one. Alright, on to our last one here now. Suppose you're traveling in a bus as a highway speed on a nice summer day and the momentum of the unlucky bug is suddenly changed as it splatters, splatters on the front window. Compared to the force that acts on the bug, how much force acts on the bus? Now, they're not really asking us to solve for some number here. They're wanting you to just think about what's happening here. So, you hit a bug. It splatters. So, there was a force that acted on the bug. But there was also a force that acted on the bus. They want to know, how are those forces compared to each other? Well, if you think back to Newton's third law, it says for every action there's an equal, and that's the key word, equal and opposite reaction. So what does that tell us? There was a force that acted on the bug, there was a force that acted on the bus. How are they compared to each other? They're the same because of Newton's third law. Um, well, third law isn't really because, third law helps us explain that action. Um, let's talk more about that as we go on here. Although the momentum of the bus is very large compared to the momentum of the bug, 
the change in momentum of the bus compared to the change in momentum of the bug is, well, there's a lot of change in momentum here. So, again, this goes back to third law, Newton's third law again. And, and notice the law doesn't necessarily talk just about force. It says for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So when we talk about the momentums here, this change in momentum, they're going to be equal to each other. And let's explain why. All right, let's explain why. Well, the change in momentum, we have this equation, um, momentum is m times v. Well, the bug has a very small mass, so it has a very large change in velocity. The bus, however, has a very large mass, and it's going to end up getting a very small change in velocity. And that's why they're still equal to each other. One has a very large change in velocity, the other one has a very large mass. The bug has a very small mass, so the bus is going to have a very small change in velocity. All right, so they're going to, the change is going to be the same. Which experiences the greater acceleration? Think of Newton's second law. Both bus, both the same bug. Well, I want you to think of Newton's second law and third law here. Newton's second law, because force is equal to ma, <coughs> but we want you to understand that, again, this is an action-reaction, all right? There's a change in acceleration on the bus, and there's a change of acceleration on the bug. Well, the bus has a very large mass. So it's, as you can probably, some of you are starting to guess, it's going to have a very small change in acceleration. The bus is going to change speed. It's just not measurable. All right? We can't tell it, but it does change speed when it hits the bug. It's just an infinitesimally small change in speed. The bug, on the other hand, has a very small mass. So what's going to happen? It's going to get a very large change in acceleration. <clears throat> so which one experiences the greater acceleration? The bug. All right, last question here for today. <coughs> Which therefore suffers the greater damage? Well, we know that this has to be the bug. The bug is ended, it's put out of its misery. And the bus, if you go to the car wash, you can wash the bug right off the windshield of the bus. So this one's a fairly easy one for you to understand. The bug has the greater damage. Well, hey, I hope that was informational for you guys. I'll catch you on the flip side.